Okay, so we're going to look at how to calculate uh, standard cell potential, or the voltage of an electrochemical cell. And that's usually notated here as we see E0 of the cell. Of course, the little symbol there means we're talking about our standard conditions, 25 degrees Celsius, 298 Kelvin, one atmosphere of pressure, and one molar solutions in the half cells. So there's two equations you can kind of look at. One, it says that you take the E0 of the cathode minus the E0 of the anode. And when you use that equation, you want to make sure that you're using the standard reduction potentials. And I've given you a list of those, or you're provided with a list of those, and that's fairly common to find that all of these reactions are listed as standard reduction potentials. So you just want to use those numbers and plug them in that formula. Or if you prefer, some people would rather find the uh, total voltage of the cell by taking the oxidation potential plus the reduction potential. And so what you'd have to do is look at your standard reduction potentials and flip the sign of whichever reaction is actually the oxidation reaction. I think that just adds another step that could uh, make some confusion, but it's totally up to you. Now, first thing we want to look at, though, is if we're comparing reduction potentials. So if you're looking at your list of reduction potentials, or if you're given a list or a few of them on an exam, and you need to determine you know, which reaction is going to stay reduction, which reaction is going to become um, the oxidation reaction. Well, the larger the value, the more positive the value of the reduction potential is going to stay at the cathode of the cell. That is going to be our reduction reaction. The smaller value, less positive, will be the oxidation reaction. There's our school bell. And that's going to be at the anode of the cell, and so the reaction would be flipped as well as its potential if you're going to use it in that one equation. Or if someone asks what's the oxidation potential, you'd have to flip the sign of the reduction potential. So like here, here are two reactions of, that are found on your list of reduction potentials. Zinc plus 2 turning to solid zinc and copper plus 2 turning to solid copper. And you see the values, negative 0.76 volts and positive 0.34 volts. All right. The zinc reaction is going to occur at the anode. All right. The 0.34 is more positive, so that's going to stay our reduction at the cathode. The oxidation reaction will be the zinc, and it's going to be flipped, and of course that would be at the anode. Whoops. Really? <laughs> anode, not amode. And so to calculate the potential, the E0 of this cell, I simply take the cathode minus anode. And I don't touchy the numbers from the table. So 0.34 minus negative 0.76, the potential is 1.1 volts. Or if you want to do the adding, then this would be the oxidation potential and you notice that it's the 0.76, the sign has flipped, plus the reduction potential, which is still the 0.34. Either way, we get our 1.1 volt value. Now remember that these um, all had to have been measured. You can't measure just a single reduction potential. They're all relative to one another. So like when you hook up the cells, you get a reading. And so somewhere along the line, we had to say, you know what, we need a standard. And that standard is the hydrogen electrode, often abbreviated SHE. -SHE. So you can see the standard hydrogen electrode. You see the one atmosphere of pressure, one molar of an acidic solution, temperature at 298. And we said that this reduction potential is going to be zero volts. So then, no matter what you hook up to it, you can figure out what the potential is of the cell that you hook up to it. For example, where did that negative 0.76 volts come for our zinc reaction? Well, here you see that the zinc anode is attached to the standard hydrogen electrode which is going to be the cathode here. And so 
when you hook it up, run it, you see that the voltmeter gave us 0.76 volts. And since we know that the value of our hydrogen is zero because we set it there, then that leaves no choice but for the E naught of the zinc to be negative 0.76 volts. And so you could compare all the different metals, all the different reactions to the standard hydrogen electrode, or now that I know zinc, I can hook something up to zinc, and then I can figure out those potentials as well. And that's a very common question, and I'm sure you'll see coming up on our test, but a couple different reduction potentials could be given to you and one missing, and it becomes like a little logic puzzle. So if these two electrodes are hooked together and I get this voltage, two others are hooked together I get this voltage, well, if I hook the other ones together, what's the missing voltage? And like I said, we'll see a problem like that coming up. So here we have a reaction, and it asks us, is this reaction thermodynamically favored as written? And if that's going to happen, our E naught of our cell, our cell potential, our cell voltage, needs to be positive. So you have to calculate the E naught of the cell. If it's a positive value, the reaction is thermodynamically favored as written. If it's negative, it's not, but the reverse would be. So looking at this reaction as written, I see that my oxidation is copper losing two electrons. That, of course, is happening at the anode. I always say that to myself so I don't miss that up. And from our reduction potential list, the E naught is 0.34 volts. Reduction would be the gaining of electrons by the zinc happening at the cathode, and there's our E naught value. So for this cell, whether you subtract or add, you're going to end up with a negative 1.1 volts. You may have recognized that this is the reverse of the common zinc copper cell that we talk about. So as written, no, this reaction is not thermodynamically favored. The reverse reaction, the one that we've been studying and looking at, would definitely be favored. Looking at this example, here I have my cell notation, and of course remember that my cell notation always starts with my anode and ends with my cathode. So because of that, I can easily see the lead is doing the oxidation and the iron ion is being reduced. And so finding those values on my reduction potential list and plugging them into my cell voltage equation, I see that I end up with a positive 0 0.90 volts. So yes, indeed, this reaction, this electrochemical cell is thermodynamically favored as set up. All right, so this says a chromium bromine galvanic cell involves the following half cell potentials. And the first, you know, so I've got the chromium and the bromine. And it says write the half reaction that will occur at the anode. All right, so again, my more positive value is going to stay as the reduction. The less positive value is going to be what is happening at the anode and will be the oxidation. So it says write the half reaction that will occur, so you have to flip it this is what would be happening at the anode. And now for my cell voltage calculation, again, either way that you want to do it, we should end up with a 1.81 volts. If you end up with um, half reactions that are both negative, again, it's still the more positive, the one that's closer to zero in value that would end up staying as the reduction. All right, so our last little question here. If you're following along with my notes packets, you'll notice a little typo. I was copying and pasting, and so the, the third reaction should say bromide instead of chloride, and the last reaction should say iodide instead of chloride. But the question it asks is, which combination of these half-cell potentials will yield the highest voltage output? So hopefully you're envisioning these reduction potentials as kind of on a number line. So the farther apart they are on that number line, the farther apart, the bigger the difference 
in their E0 values would provide our biggest voltage output. So 1 and 4 are, would be the two best half reactions. So then it asks, write the half reaction that would occur at the anode. So again, my anode would be the less positive. So 2.87 compared to 0.54, I would pick the iodine reaction that is going to be occurring at the anode. And what is my cell potential? I would, either way I do it, I'll end up with a voltage of 2.33 volts. All right, I hope this was helpful, and I will see you soon.